stopping by. So my name is Saravana and I'll be talking about the multi-instrument music, music generation that I used using a, uh, that I did as my project um, using a variational autoencoder. Um, now we know that MIDI uh, is kind of a quantized compressed version of music and uh, it's pretty tractable to for generating long melodies um, especially using uh, you know in the generator model uh, area. Um, and my goal was to see if we can, one, create a generator model that can generate MIDI sequences correctly, and then two, given a, a previous a starter sequence, can the model predict what could come after and give, let's say, a musical uh, a artist, uh, a music artist, uh, the ability to you know, give new ideas on how he can take the music forward. So let's look at some background information. Uh, MIDI essentially has um, it's a list of notes and other control attributes and each note has a pitch, velocity, the instrument type, a uh, control message program which also allows you to change the instrument and then there's a start time and an end time, right? Um, so in order to get a large data set, I went with the LAC MIDI data set and added on another uh, MIDI data set which was created by a person called MIDI man on the internet. I combined them together and I have about, um, I took about 140,000 MIDI files for the model training. The architecture itself is a variational autoencoder, except uh, one key change, or a couple of key changes. One, uh, we don't have a single decoder, but we have a decoder for every categorical variable, like the pitch, velocity, instruments, these are all categorical variables. Um, and then there's a decoder for the continuous variables, and then also another decoder for the conditional um, you know, generation. So given the start of the music, that decoder generates the, the next sequence. Um, the encoder uh, is again the very similar architecture to traditional VAE, uh, except that all the categorical variables, instead of encoding them as one hot vectors, which would have consumed a lot of memory, uh, what I did was I encoded, I converted them into embedding space and then used that uh, to train. Um, I did a few experiments with uh, simple VAE versions, uh, beta VAE, weighted VAEs. Um, in the end, um, uh, the simple VAE, the, you know, the traditional version of autoencoder with these um, blocks um, and the embedding layer uh, worked out well, which we'll listen, which we'll see in a moment. Um, so uh, that said, the loss, let's see, look at the loss. Um, yeah. You know, traditionally we would, in a VA we would have um, a reconstruction loss and the KL divergence. Here it's essentially the same. There are a bunch of reconstruction loss terms which are L2 distances uh, as well as the KL divergence terms, uh, but also the categorical cross entropy for, um, you know, the, um, oh, I'm blanking out here, categorical cross entropy for all the categorical variables. Um, all right, so generated sample, they actually look pretty good, and I'm going to start playing one of them as we speak. Uh, so this is just going to open a SoundCloud link, and I'll just click on play. Yeah, so that's that's playing, and, and I can keep talking about it while it does. So now here, so the results, um, I initially wanted to do FID and Inception, but um, I didn't have time for it, but I'll put it in the final paper. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I measured a lot of loss. Each of these losses are plotted and have plots for them. Uh, these are of the test loss and training loss looks like. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank a uh, Kelly, um, who, who was my TA mentor, and she's pretty amazing. Um, and also Jaming, Chenlin, Christy, for all the thoughtful discussions that we had on this project. Uh, well, that's all I have. Uh, thank you, and thanks for the time.